by watching their work, you would think they were all grown up. Their skits explore heavy topics from violence and transgenderism to sex slavery and even Donald Trump. But in reality, they are teenagers, part of a group called Girl Be Heard. Well, it's a Brooklyn organization that uses theater to help young girls find their strength and channel their emotions into maturity and empowerment. Joining us to talk about its mission is Abigail Ramsey, Director of Global Partnerships for Girl Be Heard. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And two participants will share a little of their work with us. Veronica Marks, great to have you here. Hi. And Nayelis Lopez, and thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you. Okay, so Abigail, um, can you just tell us a little bit about how Girl Be Heard mm -hmm. got its Brooklyn start. <laughs> got its Brooklyn start, great. Well, we're definitely a Brooklyn organization, but we serve New York City and beyond. Um, it started with a show looking at what girls cared about most. And the response was so intense that people said, we want to see more of this. And we started making a program, very small, and it started out of the, uh, I cannot remember the name of the congregation, but it's in uh, Brooklyn Heights, and yeah. our co-founder and executive director's home. And they extended for a few years that space to us before we got our own space. We're now in Dumbo, uh, thanks to an arts grant through uh, Two Trees, and which is a great hub because we have girls coming all over from Brooklyn, right. but also from the Bronx and Upper Manhattan. So it tends to be generally central to make sure that all the girls get to meet each other and have the place that they call home. So Niels and Veronica, I wonder how you guys found your way to Girl Be Heard. Um, well, I found it, uh, honestly, I found it online. <laughs> um, it's Lots the 21st of good century. Online yeah. Now. <laughs> um, but what I ended up, I came to it because I was really interested in expressing my, like, political and personal voice, because I often found that it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I felt a lot of times that whenever I was told to write something about my feelings, those feelings were supposed to be like love, happiness, sadness, but a lot of what I was feeling was like about politics and about being a girl and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so Girl Be Heard was like a really amazing space where I my feelings were allowed to be political. So Nihilus, if you have all of these avenues open, you can write in your journal or start a <laughs> blog. Why well, get together with folks and actually create theater and express yourself that way? Um, well, when you're doing it in the journals and things like this, uh, you're doing it alone. Mm -hmm. But this is a way that you can do it with people and you connect. I'm not very social. Um, I'm very introverted. So this is a way for me to get out there and to, like, they become your family. Yeah. Like, I just met her, but like, we're so cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, they become your family so quickly, and that's it's so great. Yeah. Well, you, you say you're, you're introverted, but you know, in your writing, you talk about, uh, about revolution. Yeah. So, you know, where were the foundations of, of revolution in, in your heart? Where did that sort of begin for you? Um, when I joined Girl Be Heard, and I learned about like the social issues, like homophobia and xenophobia and sexism. like. That's not fair. It's not okay, and that's I want to change that. And what better way to change that than through art? And that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. So Abigail, yes. the mission now has been laid out. Yeah. Where does where does Girl Be Heard come in with the structure to help organize those feelings into yeah. action? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I was just moved by what Nyala said. That's that's exactly what we do. You know, mm -hmm. we amplify, we develop, um, and we celebrate the girls' voices through socially conscious theater making. And that's one of the structures we have. A curriculum that we go into the schools and we also have our Sunday workshops mm -hmm. where we go through where girls identify the issues that are important to them and realize their space in the world. So through art, we really give them the space to understand who they are and where they are. But we do it by asking what's important to you, not by telling them what they should, what sh they should care about. Well, once again, by asking what's important to them is such a, sort of such a no novel concept and approach. Yeah. So what is the you know, reaction from audience members who may have a sort of preconceived idea of what children should be talking about? Do you know, it's interesting. Um, my job is more on the global side. So we've had tours, and we've had the opportunity to take girls from Brooklyn, from East New York, from Brownsville, to Geneva, to London, you know, to Trinidad, where we started our newest program, wow. you know, which is a great cross-cultural exchange. Two chaperones of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Just put it out there. Just say it. But to see the reaction everywhere we go, 
when girls get up and are knowledgeable about these issues and how it pertains to them, you know, it, it challenges our audiences to say, why, why didn't we think they would talk about that? Mm -hmm. Why didn't why did we think that this was not accessible? You know, and realize, you know, that yeah, we have a next generation coming up who yeah. needs to know what's going on, needs to be engaged, you know, if these are important issues to us. I want you to look at the statistics of of course. Well that's what I'm getting. I want to start with you, Veronica, but you guys feel free to answer as well. I know that every young person could benefit from this in a program and a platform, but I wonder what it means and why specifically girl be heard, why that's important to pull out the female population, especially in this age group. Why do you think girl be heard instead of just youth be heard? Yeah, um, well I think having it be a space, uh, and we do, we have people of, we have uh, girls and women and we also have non-binary people and people on the spectrum, but I guess having a, a no men space, um, <laughs> um, it really, I don't know, it really fosters a, an, a wonderful sense of sisterhood, I think, in, 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 in a real way. And it's, we really connect across our differences because we do have a lot of different um, we have girls from all different areas, all different backgrounds, all different walks of life sort of coming together and sharing their honest feelings like through writing and through theater. And it creates a really wonderful bond. Um, and especially I think that's super important for girls and women because we're often told to be quiet about a lot of things. Um, we're told to, you know, look pretty and smile and to shut up basically. <laughs> So it's really great that we get to be heard. Well, you know what? Speaking of being heard, uh, let's get to some of your original work. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, your piece, Donnie Baby, and what prompted you to write that? Um, <laughs> um, it's a musical, yeah? It's a song. It's it a is song. a song. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I guess it was just, it was almost funny. I was like, Wow, Donald Trump is always on my mind. And then I was like, that sounds like one of those songs from the 50s. Like, exactly. this boy is always on my mind. Johnny. Yeah, like, Donnie, oh my god, I can't stop thinking about him. He's ruining my life. Um, and so the song just kind of built out of that. And it's just this parody of old timey love songs um, about our current president. <laughs> Okay. Well, I think that clearly would have a worldwide audience, but I want to get back to you talking about the... Well, uh, hold on, no, oh, we, have we, have, we have a video we, clip, yeah, so hear this Veronica song. Marks, <laughs> Donnie's <laughs> Baby, hit it! <laughs> Donnie Baby, can you see? Donnie Baby, Freaking out about my human rights. Donnie, I can't get you out of my head. For my uterus, for my bed. For sacred land that belongs to the tribes. And I can't get you out of my mind. Donnie, baby, you're driving me crazy. Mostly because you seem um, kind of crazy. Huh? As a mentally ill person, that's not a word I'd like to use. But I think it applies to you, ew. Donnie, just because your hands are small doesn't mean you gotta build a wall. We get it, your hands are big, and so is the wall and the giant pipeline. <laughs> Donnie, baby, it couldn't be bigger. The number of lies that you posted on Twitter. Donnie, baby, you're making me hot. Or is that the EPA budget that you cut? Uh, Donnie, baby, I don't want to get fired just because of the girls I admire. I'm gay, did you think this was a love song? It's not. Sorry for the side plot. Donnie, baby, you say you worry about the Syrian kids, but you didn't take any in. Baby, just tell me what you want. Besides my various body parts, Donnie, baby, can you see what you're doing, doing to me? Donnie, I can't get you out of my mind. Freaking out about my human rights. Woo! Yes, we got our applause for that. And, but and she had the backup singers though too. <laughs> you know, but it, and, but. I'll be honest with you, my first sort of reaction to that mm -hmm. is the fact that it's just like sort of throwback with the, the doo-wop. Yeah, right. It just really sort of puts it in context, just, you know, women's struggle and, and inequality and, and how it's it's generational and how 
how much the bar has moved or not since, mm -hmm. you know, my mother, my grandmother, my sister, and now my, you know, you're the age of my nieces. So that's, that was amazing. What was it like to sort of put that whole piece together? Um, it was like, it was like I had to write it. Like it almost, like it wasn't hard, it was just like coming out of me and like the rhymes were just kind of like coming to me and I was like, I gotta write it down. Yeah. And sometimes I'd think of like new verses on the subway. Um, it was like, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't hard. It was like, I have to write this. It was just like. It's giving you so much material. <laughs> oh, yes. I could, oh, but let's so get verses. this woman in a writer's room. We need to channel that. John Stewart is listening. Come on. She, she's going to college for writing. So, wow. yeah, Perfect. absolutely. Perfect. Exactly. The future. Well, speaking of writing, yours may not be to a beat, but you have a great piece that you're going to share with us. Tell us what the inspiration was. Um, now and Trump and like just everything that's happening and the fact that we're moving backward instead of forward mm -hmm. like everything's changing and I live in Bushwick and Bushwick is being gentrified yeah, it is. that's becoming a problem um, also what else did I write about um, oh also like my parents are immigrants and so from the beginning they haven't been given the chance to be great and people have already given up on them as soon like because of who they are. And then that leaves us, the children, we either have to choose to be better or we can uh, like give in to the same things that our parents had to go through. So yeah. that's what it's about. Well, Nailis, you ready to be heard, girl? Yeah, All yeah right, I have to take it away. This is called Why I Revolution. I am not the roof but up above me, or the shaky ground shook by inequality, economic insufficiency. The stars licked and smudged by deplorable optimists that have robbed the strife from my immigrant family, forcing us little ones with the choice of trifling success or collecting checks of fake disabilities. Then they pick at us when they're the ones who question our civility. Xenophobics use their infability to burn holes to thick accents, ironing our tongues on made in China ironing boards. These are our languages, our pronunciations and punctuations. You can't just come and correct me based on your secondhand cultural interpretation. It's cultural cremation. You know it's justo, it's not fair. Because that, my friends, is imposed Americanization. I revolution because I'm stuck. And I'm tired of being stuck in the same sticky tones of last year. My shades of anger are different now. Last year was about me and why I was hurting. But this year, I solemnly swear to make it about our pain. I was sure it hurt that's so different they'll heal each other. This year is about us. I'm working on creating uniting metaphors about peace through anger. I'm learning how to spell revolution in capital letters. I'm learning that revolution persists through strong minds with mean faces, badass humans that only grow stronger in anger in crappy situations, and marching like hell to strive for tangible world peace. Revolution means overturning poisonous soil, and growing colorful gardens of complex peace. Revolution started by minorities because they are automatically made inferior by being called minority. Revolution is what I do because there are people against the things that I cannot change, but they tend to forget that I am what makes them feel normal. Yes, yes. yes. I feel you. Mm. So if you ever needed any uh, sort of recruitment tools, <laughs> <laughs> these two have been weaponized. Yeah. So how can weaponized. people get in on the Girl Be Heard Absolutely. experiment? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked that. We have a couple of things. Um, first of all, we started a first program in the Bronx now. So we wow. have two programs going on. We have a culminating performance July 22nd at Pergonis Theater, um, which is in the South Bronx. Okay. Um, so if you want to see the work of our newest participants, definitely come. We have audition in September. That's going to be on our website, and it's um, girlbeheard.org. You could call the office 718-222-4475. We're happy to, you know, tell you more about it, but that's in September. And lastly, and most important for all nonprofits, we have a gala. We yeah, have our gala yeah. coming up. Yeah, like and up. this you is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> we, our last year's fairy godfathers were Lin-Manuel Miranda from mm. Hamilton Never and his father. <laughs> <laughs> and they helped us secure an amazing space which is yeah. at the World Trade Center, um, uh, World Trade Center 4, yeah. um, on the 68th floor. So it's going to be an extraordinary event. And our participants, not for Veronica, because she's going to be in college, but will be performing. <laughs> I love this. 
That's exactly. Amazing. We'll be performing. So those are three ways that you could definitely get engaged. And it's it's it, the, on the website, accepts donations on every page. On every on page. Every page. Yes, right. you can, I'm inspired. Boom. Yeah, so what's next for the girls? Man. And I have to ask, you know, especially Nayelis and, and you know, um, Veronica, as you move on, what has been the reaction from from your peers? You said you were, you know, introverted, and you now you girl be heard. Yeah, have they come back and say like, I hear you, girl, or what's going on? Um, I actually I was able to get some of my friends to join, and they're like a part of the conversation now. So um, I have my friends Brianna and Maribel; they're a part of it. Uh, I also have so um, my girl be heard family crew people. So we got together and we had this like workshop at my school. And so even people that weren't a part of Girl Be Heard were able to like join in in the conversation. And people who I never thought would like be a part of it were very interested. And we had uh, males there too, so they could be a part of the conversation. Because it's not a one-sided thing. So we yeah. wanted to hear what they had to say also. So mm -hmm. Veronica, in our last 20 seconds, you're the alumnus moving on. Tell us a reason why people should support and get involved with Girl Be Heard. Because Theater fosters empathy, and I think that is what we always need, and we need it so much right now. Um, it's you see someone telling their story right in front of you, live on stage, and you connect with them in a way you really can't in any other art form or in any other space. And I think that's just incredibly important to give to, and incredibly important to be a part of. All right, we'll have to leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you, you guys so much. Have been delightful. <laughs> <laughs> this is so fun. That was awesome. Like, come back. Totally. <laughs>